Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Toast and today we are back with another Final Fantasy Brave Exodus video and guys today Ability Awakening update for uh, all our heroes. That's what we got after maintenance really really cool So we're gonna go over all the heroes. We're gonna start with Mr. Nicole here Sorry if I look left because I'm looking at my second monitor. So let's go down here Let's see what he has to offer. So first iceberg stance plus one uh, basically increase ice and water resistance by 85% now instead of a 70% and when you awaken in a second time you go up to 100% so that's really really strong getting that ice and water resistance by 100% uh, really expensive though then you have a uh, magic restorative so basically is a uh, MP heal move MP heal move uh, at plus 2 you recover 60 MP and it still costs you 10 to use which is really really nice uh, the Courageous Stance and uh, Fortune Stance, basically, you were able to boost up the uh, opposite stat. So let's say here you were able to boost uh, Attack and Magic by, at the beginning it was 110% or 115, I think. Now you can boost it up to 130% with the de uh, decrease in Defense and Spirit by 30% as opposed to be 65%. Actually, let me check right here. Fast, fast. So yeah, it was still 130%, but now the decrease is a lot less. So basically, you're going to be able to decrease your defense and spirit by 30%. But the second you do a plus 2, so when you awaken a second time, uh, you increase your attack and magic by 135% for 3 turns, and basically you get no decrease in defense or spirit, and vice versa for fortune stance. When it's plus 2, increase defense and spirit by 135% for 3 turns to all allies, and you get no decrease in attack and magic. And on the bonus side, uh, Courageous Sense refreshes your MP, your MP by 180 for 3 turns to all ally, which is amazing. And uh, Fortune Stance basically heals your party by 6000 HP with a 15 times multiplier for 3 turns to all ally. So that's this guy, this here, this is really, really good. So this move right here, pretty amazing. Then he gets Calm Awareness. Uh, increase resistance to poison, sleep, and petrify 100%. Increase resistance to stop 50% and charm 100%. And the second you awaken it a second time, you basically get uh, increased resistance to stop and charm by 100%. Uh, so this one right here is really good. Basically, overall, uh, all of these things right here, worth it. He's a really good buffer, guys, if you're still new to the game. And uh, there's other buffers in the game that are a little bit more complicated to play with. But this one right here, uh, that makes him that much better. So guys, if you have the uh, the crisps and uh, the money for it, go for it because he's totally worth it. He's a really, really good unit. He's probably one of my favorite units uh, since he came out or even before that because he's such a reliable unit. And now with the heal, the MP heal, uh, that makes him that much better. So guys, if you have CG Nicole and he's still one of your favorite, Go for it, because that makes him really, really good. And on top of that, we got the new uh, Enlightenment points that you're going to be able to boost your characters. And I'm going to show you after what it looks like. So that's going to be a little bit longer video, guys, but bear with me. There's a lot of things to discuss. There's a lot of things to see. Uh, these units, they, 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 they did a good, good job with the Ability Awakening. My second one, Lotus Mage Fina. And this is where she shines a little bit more. So we're going to go down here. Thank you! To the wiki by the way because uh, you're providing us with a lot of good stuff right now so manatopia recovers mp eel 50 to all allies, all allies except caster and uh, refreshes 40 mp split over three turns for all allies except the caster when you do it plus two basically same thing happens but now it's for all allies and it's a 40 mp with a 0.4 uh, modifier yeah i'm reading correctly yeah, because right here it's except caster and right here the MP yield to all allies goes to everybody and the caster. So that's the big difference in Manatopia plus 2. You get a little bit more MP yield on uh, CG Fina also. Then her Shining Cheer, really really nice. Heal 3000 HP with a 9 times multiplier over 3 turns. Increase LB gauge 4 to all allies. Once you do it a second time, plus 2 version, uh, you basically get increased LB gauge 5 to all allies per turn so that's really really nice for the time that you cast it you basically give five crystal to all allies then she gets her sacred burst uh light magic damage with 6.5 times multiplier with spr scaling to one enemy uh basically when you awaken at plus two a chains with disorder so really really nice if you want to do a little bit of extra damage with her 
uh, then our Divine Veil, which is really, really surprising and really, really good, guys. Uh, basically, uh, base form it just gives you an attack and uh, attack and defense plus 80%. Right here, when you awaken to plus one, increase attack, defense, magic, and spirit by 100% for four turns to all allies. Increase all elemental resistance by 50% for four turns to all allies. So that's really, really nice since you're able to buff your stats up and also buff uh, your uh, elemental resistance. Divine Veil plus 2, even better, increase attack, defense, magic, and spirit by 120%, and now it's for 5 turns, which is really, really nice. The increase in all uh, element resistance is still 50%, but it's for 5 turns now. Uh, one cool thing, with the enlightenment points, you're able to uh, unlock the move double cast with Fina. So with double cast, you're going to be able to double cast some of her moves, which is really, really nice. If she's your main healer, guys, she became that much better. Then her White Lotus uh, basically increases her uh, LB, LB gauge fill rate by 100%, increase SPR by 75% when equipped with a staff or a bow. When you do plus two version of that, uh, basically the uh, increase LB gauge is still 100%, but now she gets a increase in resistance to charm by 100% and boost her SPR by 100% when equipped with a staff or a bow. So that makes her even that much better. So you're able to build up that spirit even that much higher. I'm really excited because uh, her again, she's one of my favorite healer. They're actually really, really cool units. So uh, it's fun to see that they're that much better. Then she gets sexy pose. Charms, uh, chance to counter physical uh, physical attack 30% with sexy pose. Basically inflict charms 5% to one enemy. That's That really doesn't matter, right? Because most people, most bosses are all immune to charm. Then her last one, eternal light. Basically on a seven turn cooldown available on turn one, heal. 2500 HP with an 18 times multiplier to all allies. Auto revive 80% HP for 3 turns to all allies. When you do it, the plus 2 version of that basically it becomes a 6 turn cooldown as opposed to a 7 turn cooldown. So, in my opinion, uh, CG Fina, if she's your healer, uh, with the enlightenment points, I'm going to show you guys again. You can unlock the move double cast, so you're going to be able to double cast some of her abilities that are right here like shining cheer manatopia uh prime here there's gonna be a lot of things you're gonna be able to do so she's that much better and she can buff all your stats and your elemental resistance guys she's really really good so again cg nicole yes cg fina for me is a yes especially if they're good units and your favorite units go for it now pyroglacial last well we're gonna go over his stuff right here uh again the thing with physical attackers, it's going to be really, really hard because we got Zeno of the Battle Star, we got Axstar, we got Esther, we got Elena now. So uh, for damage dealers, we actually have a lot of units that could do the job. So for these older units to show up and do some good stuff, well, it's going to be a little bit harder. But let's see what the boy CG Lastwell has to offer because if you guys are new to the game and you still have, let's say, a 7-star Lastwell and you ease your main physical attackers, well, let's see exactly what you guys can get for him so his mp 30 percent plus one uh will become dual blade mastery plus two increase chain modifier cap to six times when dual wielding so that increases his chain modifier by six when he's dual wielding and guess what he's always going to be dual wielding so that's really really good to deal a little bit extra damage it's going to cost expensive but nonetheless still a good thing to have air of the blade Increase attack and magic 20% and defense and spirit 10% with equipped with a katana. Increase MP 30% and increase Esper bonus stats by 30%. That's really, really nice. Then the second one, plus two version of that. Increase attack and magic by 40% and uh, defense and spirit by 10% with equipped with a katana. Still good. Pretty much, uh, pretty much sure you're going to be using a katana on this guy. Increases MP by 30%, still the same. I increase Esper bonus stats by 30%, still the same, that's really, really nice. And increase equipment attack by 60% when dual wielding. And guys, something that they said in the maintenance, well, post-maintenance, the whatever they showed after, uh, the, uh, the equipment for dual wielding went up by 100% to 200%. So technically the true dual wielding went up to 200%. So that's really, really good. You're going to be able to hit those modifiers a little bit higher and do a little bit more damage. So Xeno of the Battle Star, you're going to be a monster, especially when CG Lightning comes out with her TMR. That's going to be amazing. Then, Obliterating Mirror of Equity. 
Uh, still chains with absolute mirror equity, equity, obviously, that's the right thing to do. So physical damage 5.25 would ignore defense 50% to one enemy. And uh, basically when you do the plus two version, it becomes a six times multiplier with the defense ignored 50% still the same thing. So pretty nice. Then perfect selflessness. That's hard to say. Five turn cooldown available on turn one. Uh, evade two physical attacks for two turns to caster. Recover 8,000 HP to caster. Recover 320 MP to caster. Increase attack by 200% for three turns to caster. And enables skill for three turns. Uh, absolute mirror of equity. Uh, when you do the plus two version of that, basically uh, you're, um, you increase your attack by 200% for four turns and enables the skills for four turns. So that's really, really nice. Uh, pretty expensive also. But again, is your if he's your main physical attacker and uh, that's the only guy you got, why not go for it? Because he's gonna be good. He's gonna be good. He can chain with pretty much everybody. He can chain with Divine Runation and he can chain with Absolute Mirror of Equity. So that's pretty good. Then Tranquil Detachment. Increase modifiers on uh, Exorcist Storm by 0.7. Increase modifier to Blade uh, Blade Flash Final 2.75. Increase modifier 4.25 to Crimson Era and Fatal Bloom and increases LB gauge by 50%. Plus two version of that, basically you get an increase in LB gauge by 100%. Let me uh, put a little bit more music so it's more in calm and soothing. And uh, basically Blade Flash Awaken plus one, physical damage two time would ignore defense 50% to one enemy. Decreases ice resistance by 75%, so that's really nice to get that in peril right here to one enemy decreases defense by 50 percent so you're also able to break the defense and imperil the boss uh the boss or the units that you're attacking enables skill for two turns uh to cast their blade flash final basically awaken plus two the physical damage goes up to two times multiplier still the same defense 50 percent to one enemy decreases ice resistance by 110 percent so the imperil is a lot stronger guys 110 percent you can deal a lot of damage so let's say you have uh this guy with eon moto and a great sword well you can do a lot of damage since you have ice element to your weapon and you're decreasing ice resistance by 110 percent and you're breaking now the defense by 60 percent for three turns to one enemy uh that could do that could do some good damage especially if you're chaining with another character that has uh let's say a uh final uh, final chain hit like uh, Axe Star or Xenon of the Better Star that the last hit of the chain is basically an increased modifier that could do a lot of damage that could do a lot of damage and uh, the absolute mirror of equity obviously it chains with the absolute mirror of equity right here physical damage 6.5 would ignore 50% to one enemy so that's really really good uh, CG last well you look good you can do some good damage you can do some good stuff but uh, again there's a lot better physical attackers than him but if he's your only unit and if he's your only trainer go for it because it's going to be totally worth it now one of my personal favorite is getting a little change blossom sage sakura she was one of my favorites for the longest time uh, just because everything she can do and uh, let's go over a kit because she has a lot of things to talk about she has a lot of things to nothing's like cg nicole right Four things, bang, we're done. These characters, they got a whole big revamp. So our MP 30% basically changes to quick support combo. So you're going to be able to double cast some of your abilities. So you have the quick uh, combo support plus two. Uh, I'm reading this. You have this move right here, quick combo, where you're able to dual cast some of your abilities. Uh, dual cast, double cast some of your abilities twice in one turn. So let's see what this has to say for us. Cast two times. So you're going to be able to cast two times Celestial Roar uh, plus one Celestial Roar. So it ju they're just adding stuff that you can double cast into that quick combo. So that's really, really nice. That's really, really good because you're going to be able... Wait, I want to see... Right here, Electric Infusion. So you're going to be able to double cast giving a Lightning Element to Physical Attack. So if you have two characters that they have non-elemental swords, well, guess what? Turn one, double cast that thing put lightning element on both swords and you're good to go then defensive barrier becomes really really good it used to be a 20 percent now it's basically 30 percent for three turns and plus two version of that is basically for four turns so that's pretty nice rot mastery goes up by a lot 
Basically, the plus two version gives you increased magic 100% when equipped with a rod, increase, increase equipment magic 50% when single wielding any weapon, and increase equipment magic 50% when dual wielding, and gives you an increase in 20% to your MP. Once again, that's really nice. Totally worth it because it's not too expensive and you can boost her damage up. Then the quick final thunder, basically a big hitting move. Uh, the plus two version of it basically goes really, really high. Lightning magic damage, four times with consecutive use increase, six time up, 3.5 times each times you build it up. Basically, it's a 25 times multiplier at the end. So basically, if you're able to cast it six times, the last time it's going to hit, with uh, 25 times multiply it's really really strong apparently in jp the modifier is 33 at the end but nonetheless 25 still is really really strong especially if you're able to imperil uh whatever you're fighting the boss or something like that that last it can do a lot of damage guys so uh that for me that's a yes and it's not too expensive they take black crisp really really cheap so she can do a lot more damage here then something really cool, Chanel can chain with Bolting Strike. So if you're a big Esther fan, you're going to be able to chain with her. So Quick Shock, Blade plus 2. Basically becomes decreased lightning resistance by 80% for 3 turns to 1 enemy. Lightning magic damage, 7.2 times multiplier to 1 enemy. And chains will Bolting Strike. That's pretty nice. That, that in my opinion, that's a really cool move. So uh, Esther fans right here. If you don't have a chainer with her to Bolting Strike, well, guess what? This thing right here, with that 8% decrease on uh, Lightning Resistance, that's really, really nice. And guess what? You can double cast this. Totally worth it. Then Quick Light Blade, uh, basically the plus 2 version, decreased Light Resistance by 80% for 3 turns to 1 enemy. Light mag Magic Damage 7.2 times to 1 enemy, and it chains with Disorder. Quick Dark Blade, decreased Dark Resistance by 80% for 3 turns to 1 enemy. Dark magic damage 7.2 to 1 enemy and it chains with absolute zero. Then her quick combo plus 2. That's a lot of things. So you're going to be able to cast 3 times all of her moves. So all of these moves right here, I'm not going to go all over all of them guys. You guys can read them right here or you can check on the wiki. But you're going to be able to cast 3 times those moves. So that's really really good. Pretty expensive but being able to triple cast some of her moves makes her that much better and you're going to be able to deal that much more damage so that's really really cool then her quick rebel intention plus two version of that magic damage eight point times five with ignore spirit 50 percent to all enemies not so bad you're, uh, you're going to be using this one but not as much as her uh, i think if you're fighting a boss that's really weak to lightning you're going to be using more of a quick uh, final thunder just to build up that damage a little bit more and really really deal out some damage and with this quick combo being able to cra uh, to cast three times that's really good because you can uh, you can cast damage mitigation on turn one you can cast uh the move that can change with bolting strike so you lower the resistance to lightning by 80 percent and then you can do quick final thunder and slowly start building up that big damage then infernal blossom x it's on an 8 turn cooldown. I'm going to go over the last one right here on the plus 2 version. Restore HP 12,000. That's pretty good. And MP 120 to all allies except caster. Increase LB gauge 10 LB gauge to all allies except caster. Increase attack, defense, magic, and spirit 150% for 3 turns to all allies. That's really good. HP damage. 30% to cast her. So she's going to take a little bit of MP damage. But guess what? You're still buffing all your stats by 150%. So uh, let's say your party dies. And your, one of your character has to heal everybody. And your buffer is dead. And she's still alive. Well guess what? Emergency right here. That can be really really good. So uh, really expensive though. But that can be really really good. Then her Celestial War. The plus 2 version. On a 5 turn cooldown available on turn 1. Cure Magic Braid to Caster, increase Lightning Resistance 100% for 2 turns to Caster, enable Skill for 2 turns to Caster, Quick Pentacombo plus 2, decrease Lightning Resistance 110% for, for 3 turns to all enemies, guess what, right here, Quick Pentacombo, cast 5 times, Quick Final Thunder, Quick, uh, quick Thunder is Light, Quick Shock Blade, Quick Final Thunder, yeah, so being able to cast that 5 times, that could do a lot of damage. So, uh, what do I have to say about Blossom Sage Sakura? Well, there's some good magic damage dealers out there. But again, if she's your number one, 
she has good support capabilities and if you have the the uh, the money the gill and all the crisp for her i say go for it because she's good she's a cool unit uh i gotta say these three units uh sakura fina and uh, nicole they were probably one of my favorites when they came out but uh just seeing that she can do a lot of damage now so you can increase that magic damage so cg sakura you get a thumbs up girl you get a thumbs up girl now this girl right here she gets a lot better and uh she probably becomes one of the best breaker probably the best breaker in the game so we're gonna go right here she has less things to talk about so her attack 30 percent plus one increase attack by 30 percent pretty easy right uh life risking resolve Increase attack and HP by 30%, chance to ignore fatal damage 30% when HP is above 1% max one time. So that's really, really good since she has a chance to survive on the last hits. Then full metal kick plus two. Physical damage three times to one enemy. She has dispel. Remove all status effects from one enemy so she's able to dispel the enemy and also increase her LB gauge by one. So that's really, really good. Uh, sometimes that's what you need. Just somebody that's able to dispel and then guess what? You dispel. And then you can break again so that's really good because if you have her as a seven star this thing right here double absorb yeah that's that's not bad hopefully oh uh can you no you wouldn't be able never mind what i just said unless they do something cool that they would allow this to be in full metal kick i would have to check in the enlightenment points because i'm telling you those enlightenment points they're really really good guys so sunlight beam magic damage two times to all enemy inflict blind 100 percent to all enemies Chains with Fatal bar Barrage, pretty nice. Arms Dissolver, plus two version, that's where it becomes really, really good, guys. Physical damage one times to all enemy, decrease attack and magic 65% for three turns to all allies. It's an AoE break, so that thing right here, that's really, really good. 65% on an AoE break, yeah, pretty strong. Then you get Burial Dissolver, physical damage one times to all enemy, decrease defense and spirit 65% for three turns to all enemies. Another big AoE break. We're looking at seriously 9% off the strongest break, which is 74%. But I think she can go up to 79%. Let me check right here. Fast, fast. Yeah. She has the strong break with 79%. And right here, you're not too far away from it with 65%, which is right here. So that's really, really good. She becomes a really, really good breaker, guys. Then attack absorb. Uh, we're going to go for the plus two variants. Increase attack by 70% for three uh, for five turns to one enemy. That's uh, decrease attack. So that's really, really strong. Increase attack by 120% for five turns to the caster and increase your LB gauge by two. So guard absorb, same thing. You're going to be able to break the attack, defense, magic, and spirit by 70%. So you can double cast that. That's really, really strong, guys. And you're able to increase your own stats and your LB gauge. So that's crazy. She's super, super good. Then her uh, super invention, we're going to go with the plus two variants right here. Randomly uses 50% chance to use super invention. Recover 60 MP to all allies. Enable skill for one turn. High output shield device. Then her 30% chance to cast super invention right here. Recover 60 MP to all allies. Enable skill for one turn. Full healing force. 17% chance to uh, enable the skill for one turn. Running fire plus and enable and 3% chance to basically uh, unlock the move explosive type panic shell for one turn but for me the brakes the brakes are what makes her really really good then she gets airbag or plus two variants increase defense and spirit by 30 percent autocast airbag plus two at the start of battle after being revived we're gonna go over the uh the airbag right here uh, mitigate damage taken 10 percent for 9999 turns to caster so basically 10% damage mitigation right off the bat. So that's really, really good. Especially when she gets healed and uh, come back to life. Then Bora plus 2. Increase LB gauge 150%. High Tide. That's crazy. So if you have a High Tide weapon on her, she can get her LB gauge really, really fast. Then increase LB gauge by 1 per turn. Yeah. She's, uh, in my opinion, if you have her 7 star, she's totally worth it. I output shield device, mitigate uh, damage taken 30% for all allies, which is really nice for 3 turns. Full healing force recovers 100% HP to all allies. Uh, running fire plus, chains with running fire plus, it's a 40 hit move. Physical damage 3.2 would ignore defense 25% to one enemy. And uh, explosive type panic shell, physical damage 12 times to all units. Woo! That's really, really strong. But this right here, the only downside is 
you only have a let's say 50% chance, 30% chance, 17% chance and a 3% chance to be able to get those moves. But nonetheless, as a breaker, oh hot mama CG lid, you're pretty good. Uh you're you're really strong. This this is no joke. This is no this is really really good. CG lid. You're back on the top of the breakers, girl. You're back on the top of the breakers. Then we're gonna go with uh, the lover. Nameless Gunner Jake. We're gonna go down right here. I know it's a little bit longer video, guys, but bear with me. This is so cool. There's so many ability awakenings. And uh, they make it they they make the units that much better. And they're back to their former glory. So gun mastery. Let's go plus two variants. Increase attack by 100% with equipped with a gun. Increase equipment attack by 75% and accuracy by 25% when a single weapon is equipped. In uh, when a single weapon is equipped, basically, and increases LB damage by 50%. Not bad at all. Then flame assault plus two, ice assault plus two, electric assault plus two, and light assault plus two. Basically, all does the same thing. The only difference is the element that's going to go on the weapon. So physical damage one times to all enemy decreases fire by 90% for four turns to all enemies. Add fire element to physical attack for four turns to castle, uh, to castle, to caster. Enable skill for two turns to caster. Cool force, fatal barrage, last shot, increase LB gauge 20 to caster. So basically every single move. So the ice assault, electro assault and light assault does the same thing. The only difference is the imperil on the on the element and also the element attached to the weapon but for the rest it's exactly the same uh really really nice since you're able to do a little bit more damage but not for anything i don't think you're gonna see any cg jake there uh his limit burst could do a lot of damage uh also his uh killer assault could do good amounts of damage but meh i still think he's not gonna be that good but let's go over Killer Assault, just in case you like using him. On a 4 turn cooldown, available in turn 1. Cure Attack Break to Caster. Increase Resistance to Attack Break 100% for 3 turns to Caster. Increase Attack 250% for Caster for 3 turns. Enable Skill for 3 turns. Last Shot. So yeah, I said Killer Assault is a big strong move, but I meant Last Shot right here. So uh, not bad. If you're able to boost, boost your attack by 250% and you Chain Finish with that, it could be nice. But... Uh, yeah, not for anything. Uh, I don't think you're gonna see him that much. Uh, he's still... You're not gonna be paying that much using that much skill just for... To use him maybe once. Because other than that, he has no support capabilities for your party. He's not gonna help you survive. And the bosses right now, they're doing more and more damage. So in my opinion, Nameless Gunner Jake. I'm sorry, dude. Not worth it. But this guy right here, we're gonna finish with uh, the Rain Boy. We're gonna finish right here. He, he gets a thumbs up too because he becomes really, really good. He was already really, really good. I don't have him, but it doesn't matter. I have CG Charlotte now, but this is basically competition to CG Charlotte right here. So Escort Leader plus two basically increases attack, defense, magic, and spirit by 120% for three turns to all allies and increase the LB gauge four to six to all allies. So that's really, really nice. If you don't have a buffer or if you've in, you're in need of an emergency buffer, 120% that's really really good then standout plus two increased chance of being targeted 100% for three turns to caster mitigate damage 40% for three turns to caster so that's really really good complete focus oh this one is beautiful increase SPR by 250% for two turns to caster enable skill for two turns to caster unleashed focus increase modifier three times for two turns to caster on unleashed focus and we're gonna go over the move because you guys are gonna see he's really really good magical distraction uh, magic damage three times with SPR scaling to one enemy decreases magic by 65% for five turns to one enemy so guess what you're fighting a magic uh, boss that does a lot of magic damage if you break him then you uh, complete focus that's pretty disgusting you're gonna take no damage with this guy energy wall another good move uh, chance to protect all allies from magic damage, 80% chance with a damage mitigation from 50 to 70% for 3 turns to caster. Increase spirit by 130% for 3 turns to caster, which is really, really nice. Right off the bat, if you're not buffing your stats, bam, you're able to buff your spirit by 130%. Increase resistance to spirit break by 100% for 3 turns to caster. This is, this is really, really good. Really, really good. So that thing right here, right off the bat... Your team's protected, so that's really, really nice. Guardian's Fighting Spirit, plus two. 
Increased defense and spirit by 40% and HP by 20%. Uh, chance to protect, well the plus one variance gives you chance to protect one ally from magic damage 50% with damage mitigation 50%. That's not bad, so on turn one if you're not casting this, well there's a good chance he's going to jump into in, uh, in front of somebody and just protect them. So that's really really nice. Esper con uh, conve uh, Covenant. Increase Esper bonus stats by 60%. Yeah, that's all I have to say. And Scarlet Healing plus 2 restores HP 6000 and MP 60 to all allies. Uh, unleash focused magic damage 10 times with SPR scaling to all enemies. Guys, this guy is a monster. If you don't have CG Charlotte, but you have 7 star Wicked Rain, guess what? You're in good business because this one deserves a thumbs up. He's really, really good. It makes him that much better. Protects your party. Is able to buff your party uh is able to do a little bit of damage so yeah this guy totally worth it so in my opinion guys if you have good characters my opinion only uh nicole is worth it cg fina is worth it sakura is worth it lid is worth it and awaken rain is worth it uh nameless gunner jake not good enough uh i'm sorry pyroglass will last well you're good but you're not that good anymore but uh, even Sakura, you guys can skip on her. But Fina, guys, she becomes that much better. And let's go right here. We're going to jump into the game. Right here. Whoop. Quick uh, quick switch. We're going to go right here. And I want to show you guys something. All right. So if you if you didn't notice, right here, latent abilities and awaken, uh, awakenable abilities. So we're going to go right here. Hey, let's click on latent abilities. I already did it, but let's go Fina, all right? Because I wanted to show you guys exactly what we can do. So there's two moves right here that unlock for her. Bam, let's go here. So if I pay, let's say, how much cost is this? Uh, 2,000, something like 2,000, right? Uh, 1,500 or 1,700, whatever. So right now, this thing uh, gives me uh, enable specific abilities to be, twice, to be used twice in, twice in one turn. So right now, if I upgrade a second time, I'm going to be able to double cast Shining Cheer, Arc Punisher, Divine Veil, Dystopia, and Sacred Burst. So let's go right here. Bam. Let's do this. It's a, uh, it's a 1,300 points. Let's do this. Bam. That means, can I upgrade a second time? Yes, I can. So basically, when I upgrade a second time, added Blossom Art and Eternal Light to abilities that can be used twice in one turn. So basically, you can dual white magic, you can dual cast with her. Well, actually dual cast, it's a natural kit, dual white magic comes if you equip with a Holy Rod Staff. But now you can double cast some of her abilities and you can dual cast magic. So that's really, really good guys, she became that much better. Let's go over Nicole, same thing. I want to show you guys what I did with Nicole. So right here, you can unlock this so you basically get hp plus 30 percent if you do it a second time you basically get defense and magic plus 30 percent so you get an extra boost right here let's say i want to do this uh basically this thing right here unstoppable stance you basically unlock this move uh remove stop from all allies and if we checked here let me go back down to my boy uh calm awareness if you guys max that out to plus two ability uh increase resistance to poison sleep and petrify by 100 percent and increase resistance to stop and charm by 100%. So guys, if your party stopped, guess what? You use this, it's on a 4 turn cooldown, remove stop from your old party, and you're good to go. Really, really nice. I'm going to take my time because I still, I still want to check the other characters exactly what they can give you. But uh, let's see CG lid fast, fast before we finish because it's a long video. It's 30 minutes and uh, it's a long video. But this one right here, boost physical and magic damage against Machina Monsters. Uh, pretty nice. So yeah, guys, ability awakenings, they're really, really good. Uh, those latent abilities, they're also really nice. So make sure every single day, every single day, you guys log into the game, get your rewards. As I try to tickle my little Oron right here. Hey, Oron, how's it going? All right. Uh, go into the vortex. You're going to go right here as it's loading. Take your time. Take your time, game. We're not in a hurry. Seriously, we're not in a hurry, right? We're going to do it. Yeah, we did it. All right. So we're going to go right here. And hence, you're going to do Chamber of Enlightenment. You're going to do it. And right on top... Right here, I did it already today, but right on top, it would be free daily one. So you would be able to do the free one every single day 
So make sure you do that, get those points, uh, build up those characters, they're really, really good. So guys, I don't want to make it longer, thanks so much for watching this video. By the way, let me know down below which character you're going to be awakening. If you like this type of video, I'm going to do more, we stay nice and calm. Guys, leave a like, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.